Today, we bring you a project that shows Japan's high technology capabilities in the area of space exploration, the ICAROS solar cell spacecraft. The ICAROS spacecraft was launched into space in May 2010, but ICAROS itself isn't propelled by rockets. It uses something called a solar sail. These sails are like the sails on boats you see on the ocean, but instead of wind, they use solar radiation. In fact, ICAROS was the first spacecraft to successfully use solar sail technology. The sail on ICAROS is square and made of four thin plastic sheets, each five meters high and 14 meters wide. The plastic film is only 7.5 microns thick, a tenth the diameter of a human hair. Wow. A sailing ship here on Earth uses a sail to catch the wind so it can move without an engine, but Icarus's sail catches the sun's rays. How does that work? Well, Icarus is actually propelled by the pressure of solar radiation. The sun's rays exert a tiny amount of pressure. On Earth, we don't feel that pressure because of forces like gravity, so it's almost undetectable, but in space, is an effective source of motive power. How much pressure does sunlight generate? On Ecos's 14 meter by 14 meter sail, the force is minuscule, 0.2 grams. The pressure is very small, but over time it can gradually build up sufficient acceleration to travel to a distant planet like Venus. And sunlight is always shining in space, so you don't have to worry about running out of fuel. Exactly. The idea of a solar sail was first conceived about 100 years ago. Many research institutions in the US and elsewhere have tried to implement it, but Japan was the first to succeed. That's great. <laughs> but why did it take 100 years to accomplish? Well, there were a number of challenges. Making a workable sail is difficult. As I mentioned, the pressure of solar radiation is extremely small. To move a spacecraft with that tiny force, the sail must be very thin and very light. And at the same time, the material must withstand the extremely harsh radiation of space. The key to the success of Icaros is its sail. Let's see what kind of obstacles the engineers of Icaros faced. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, created the first working solar sail spacecraft. The crux of the development program was the material for the sail. A type of polymer film called polyamide was selected. Polyamide films are thin, lightweight and tough, used in circuit board insulators and for heat insulation on satellites. Development of the solar sail material was headed by Rikio Yokota, who has researched polyamide films for more than 30 years. In space, exposure to radiation and light is extremely harsh. Polyamide is pretty much the only option among plastic films that can withstand that. So we had to create a polyamide film that would do the job. This is the polyamide formula that Yokota developed. The challenge then became how to process it as a film of unprecedented thinness. Because solar radiation pressure is so weak, the sail must be as thin and lightweight as possible. To make the film as thin as possible, Yokota turned to a company that specializes in film manufacturing. Conventional polyamide films are 12.5 micrometers thick. This one needed to be 7.5 micrometers. There was a lot of pressure. Failure wasn't an option. A failure of the film could have ended the entire Icaros mission, and we were constantly aware of that. So all of the team members worked desperately hard to create this 7.5 micrometer film. Here's how a polyamide film is made. First, the liquid polymer is rolled onto a plastic substrate.
Each the challenge is removing the film from the plastic substrate. The other substrate clung to the film up to a force of 1.9 grams. This was within the range of feasibility. What makes the two substrates different? Let's look at both under an instrument that shows the three-dimensional roughness of surfaces. The substrate on the right, from which the film peeled more easily, has almost no irregularity. The irregularity made peeling more difficult. By using the smoother substrate, they succeeded in producing a polyamide film that was just 7.5 micrometers thick. We're proud of having been involved in a project that achieved a world's first. And even more proud that we demonstrated the high level of Japanese technology. Polyimide is an amazing material. Even when it is incredibly thin, it can still withstand space's harsh radiation. Yes, in fact, Yokota developed a very special formula of polyimide for Icaros, with a property not found in ordinary polyamides. It adheres to things when heated, so no adhesive is necessary. He did this because the space environment degrades adhesives, causing them to peel off. It's a fantastic technological breakthrough. It really is. And these polyamide films not only have applications in space, but also medicine and other fields. Icaros flies through space propelled by an extremely thin sail. The most challenging part of the mission came two weeks after launch. For the Icaros space mission, the most difficult part is unfurling the solar sail. With the weight of masts or a rigid framework, all the effort to make the sail itself light is undone. That's no good. So to unfurl a large sail, we chose the spin method. Technologically, this approach was considered too difficult by other countries. We decided to try it with Icaros. It was extremely challenging. In the first stage, the challenge was unfurling the sail into a cross shape. First, the team tried slowly deploying the folded sail by sliding it under a bar. But in experiments, the sail caught on the bar and failed to deploy. The centrifugal force on the sail was less than the force of friction with the bar, hindering the sail's deployment. So the bar was redesigned to rotate, reducing friction. Based on simulations, the designers determined that this would work for the first stage of unfurling. But then came the biggest hurdle. 
In the second stage, the sail is unfurled to its full expanse. Initially, the concept was to slowly play out cords attached to the sails to ensure it unfurled slowly and steadily. But simulations showed that this method had problems. In space, there is quite a high risk when playing out a cord slowly. It's a bit like when an unskilled fisherman tries to reel out a line. There's no gravity in space, so the cord reel tends to puff out. The mission could instantly fail. It was decided to drop the bars and let the sail expand out in one go. The fear with this method was that the shock of the sail opening would disrupt the spacecraft's orientation. On June 3, 2010, the sail was opened. It was a very tense time for the Icaros team members. These images of a sail tip were taken from the fuselage of the probe. The weighted tips drifted outward. The first stage of unfurling was a success. On June 9th, the second stage of unfurling also went as planned. Images showing the fully spread sail were beamed back to Earth. At this moment, the world's first successful solar sail flight began. The project leader, Osamu Mori, must have felt a lot of emotion when that sail opened up. Definitely. And think of the countless times that the project team folded and unfolded origami models of the sail before finally arriving at the square shape. The use of origami gives this solution a certain unique Japanese flavor, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, it does. And apparently, they also rented an ice skating rink in the middle of the night to test the unfurling during the development process. Because the sail rotates as it unfurls, they need the low friction surface of the ice rink. The success of Icaros certainly is the fruit of much hard work. The next critical part of the mission was steering Icaros. How do you steer a solar sail? Let's watch and find out. Steering is accomplished using liquid crystal devices embedded in the sail. They operate on the same principle as this pane of glass. When electric power is off, light scatters from the glass, making it translucent. When the electricity is on, it becomes transparent to light. When the sail's liquid crystal panels are powered off, they scatter light, making the solar radiation pressure on the sail weaker. on one side only is powered on, the pressure is greater on that side, changing the spacecraft's orientation. Sailing boats change direction by tacking their sails. Icaros can change the angle of its sail relative to the sun and thereby its trajectory. Two months after launch, the mission team set out to steer Icaros for the first time. Here's a graph of the craft's orientation relative to the The Icaros Solar Sail Mission demonstrated technology for total control of trajectory in space. 
plans are being drawn up for a solar sail space probe to explore the solar system in 2020. This ambitious project would make observations of Jupiter and other bodies farther from Earth. This is Junichiro Kawaguchi. He was a project manager for Hayabusa, the first spacecraft to successfully land on and retrieve material from an extraterrestrial body other than the moon. He also served as an advisor on the Icaros project. This is a huge leap. Having overcome great uncertainty and risk to achieve something that could only be done in space. This could mean that Japan is finally moving towards full-scale exploration of the solar system. The success of Icaros opens up new frontiers for space exploration. It certainly does. Icaros is now traveling between Earth and Venus, relaying data on the condition and orientation of its solar sail. And future plans call for a solar sail space probe with a 50-meter sail, far larger than Icarus. It is scheduled to explore the solar system around 2020. The project leader says that the success of Icarus will usher in an age of discovery of our solar system. I'm sure Japanese technology will help make many of those discoveries possible. I'm looking forward to it. I suppose that other countries are also interested in using the Icarus technology. I'm sure they are. Over the past 50 years of space explorations, we have seen an explosion of technologies, knowledge, and inventions. We're still hoping to find new energy sources, possibilities for colonization, and even other life forms. But regrettably, as we try to become a multi-planet species, we have left lots of space junk and pollution in our wake. I think that the best inventions are those that work with the Earth and not against it. Using solar power to propel grand solar sail spacecraft could shift the paradigm to more sustainable space travel, becoming one of the greatest space inventions of our time.